Electric mountain bikes are faster uphill, right? Well, everyone knows that. But does saving energy on the uphills help you ride faster on the downhills? Well, we're here at Windhill Bike Park to put that theory to the test. Sending it up that climb then, just to drop in and do a flat out run, was tiring. I'm going to take Canyon's new Strive On e-bike and pit it against the brand's non-motorised Strive. Both are enduro bikes and both have been raced at the highest level in the Enduro World Series. The only difference is that one has a motor and a battery and one doesn't. We've created two loops here at Windhill, so I'll be riding eight laps in total. Four on each course and two laps on each bike. To keep the results more reliable, I'll be alternating between the bikes throughout the day. For each lap, we'll be timing the climb and more importantly, the descent. I'll have my heart rate strap on, so I'll be checking in on that during the transitions to keep a consistent perceived effort during each lap. I'll be focusing on where each bike excels, where their limitations may lie and how they compare when ridden back to back. Of course, I want to know how far I can push myself and these bikes, but what I'm really interested in is how fatigue may impact on the results. I'm gonna take a closer look at the course and show you both bikes. But first, I wanna say a big thank you to Canyon for sponsoring this video and providing me with these bikes to ride. And don't forget to subscribe to Bike Radar for more challenges. Windhill is one of England's top bike parks with 10 trails to choose from, including a blue trail, a pro line and plenty of red and black trails in between. Our first loop takes in a single track climb with 73 metres of elevation change before a tight and technical black graded descent. Expect off camber routes, rock gardens, a few moto whoops for good measure and line choices galore to push me and the bikes hard. The second test route takes in a wider fire road ascent and switches onto a red graded jump line filled with berms, step ups and step downs. How will these two bikes handle the airtime? Speaking of which, let's go check out the bikes. E-Enduro is a fast developing bike category, thanks in part to the launch of the e-bike category at the Enduro World Series in 2019. For 2023, this is part of the UCI Mountain Bike World Series, so expect to see World Cups across the globe. As a result, we've seen a number of high-profile brands launching heavy-hitting enduro bikes designed to flatten climbs and excel on big jumps and techie terrain. Canyon is among those brands with the new Strive On, its first e-enduro bike. We've got 160mm of rear wheel travel right here, 170mm travel fork, mullet wheel setup and a geometry which pairs a slack head angle with a steep seat angle and long reach. The non-electric Strive was redesigned in 2022 as a full ball race bike. It shares the Strive on suspension travel but uses Canyon's shapeshifter tech to alter the geometry between shred and pedal modes. But that's enough talking about the bikes. What we really want to know is how do they perform in a head-to-head -head showdown? Let's get out there. Right, let's get started on the tech trail then. So remember, I'll be doing four laps, switching between the two bikes each time, and I'll be doing a climb and a descent, timing the whole thing. I'm really interested to see how the bikes both handle the big compressions and the fast accelerations of this track. First time run done. Uh, that was more knackering than I thought it would be. And I uh, just had a quick look at the Garmin and my heart rate got up to 180. And I kept it on like 140 to 150 on the climb. So yeah, it's uh, pretty physical. So first one on the normally aspirated Strive, uh, the lack of weight is immediately apparent and not necessarily in a good way, like it's hanging up more on the roots. But that said, when you're pumping over the few jumps and compressions that there are, 
you can feel the normally aspirated bike accelerating where the e-bike not so much. Fair play, I felt absolutely ruined during that lap. Okay, so that was a super gnarly tech track covered in big roots, rocks and holes. This track, Empru, is totally different in nature. It's really jumpy, it's flat at the top, and then it's got some big jumps and sharp berms toward the bottom, showing the high G loading on the bike and perhaps a bit of what they pedal like as well. So let's go. Yeah, it felt fast. E-bike's nice and stable, but you do feel it on the flat bits. Kind of the extra weight you're trying to carry along. Right, lap one on the e-bike done. Now it's time to get my pedal on and do it on the normally aspirated bike. So on this track, the regular bike without the motor feels really, really fast. Woo! Right, final run of the day. Uh, I've not got the e-bike. I'm on the naturally aspirated bike for the last run. And uh, yeah, pressure's on. So I have to do a good solid run, stay on the track. That's the important bit and uh, yeah, then go and do some data analysis. Okay, I don't know if I look knackered, but I feel knackered. Sending it up that climb then, just to drop in and do a flat out run, was tiring. So, I had a look at the times, some interesting results, I think we should go back to the studio, grab a coffee and see what they say. Let's remind ourselves of the bikes we're dealing with. They both have 170mm fork travel and 160mm travel frame. They both have similar geometry and both have carbon frames and 29 inch front wheels. The Strive On weighs 25 kilos versus the sub 16 kilo Strive and the Strive On features a mullet wheel setup with 27.5 inches on the rear compared to the 29 inch rear wheel on the Strive. But how were the bikes on track? The e-bike made the climbs effortless. I just put the Bosch CX motor in boost and left it all day. Despite a full day of riding in boost, I still had two out of five bars of battery life left in the tank at the end of the session. When it came to the descending, past the duchy was the first test track. There's very little pedaling required on the track, but it's very tough physically and mentally. In all, the perfect track to test aggressive enduro race bikes on. The e-bike was super stable on the descents thanks to the more linear, race-focused rear suspension. It was easy to stay online, especially when smashing through the raised routes and mighty awkward drop-offs and off-camber landings. The mullet setup of the Strive On allowed me to get closer to the rear wheel when squashing drops, saving me valuable tents. It also felt more predictable in the corners, with the rear wheel following the front seemingly more effortlessly than on the 29er non-assisted Strive. However, where the e-bike really shone on this type of trail was with the extra weight low down in the frame. It was easy to feel the reduction in the ratio of sprung to unsprung mass when riding. The bike felt more stable in the rough stuff, not getting kicked offline, and when the trail did impact on the direction I was traveling, the bike reacted in a more predictable and easy to correct way. Where did the non-assisted bike shine? Well, the regular Strive with its lower weight felt much lighter and easier to pick up over obstacles. It also gained momentum more quickly on the few parts of the track where I was able to pump. My average heart rate when climbing on the e-bike was 145 beats per minute, but my average heart rate when climbing on the non-assisted bike was 160 beats per minute. 
Max heart rate on the descents on both bikes was between 190 and 198 beats per minute. Climb time was approximately three minutes on the e-bike and eight minutes on the non-assisted bike. The reduction in fatigue from the low effort climbing on the e-bike was noticeable in some of the big G outs of the track. Although my arms felt fresh, so despite a slight ache in my quads, I felt able to push hard on both bikes. If the track had been longer than one minute or more pedally, fatigue might have been more of a factor. So I'm sure you all want to know the times, which you can see on screen now. So what can we take away from this? Well, the time on the first runs after a sighting lap were remarkably similar. But when I started really pushing on, the e-bike shone with its stability and forgiving nature on rough terrain, resulting in a faster time. On to track number two. Empru is a super fun red graded jump line. On the high G-force corners, the e-bike felt ultra stable and predictable. The boost off the line was rewarding, but the rest of the track was all ridden at over 25 kilometers per hour and I had a top speed of nearly 40 kilometers per hour. This meant there was no assistance from the motor during the rest of the run. It's also worth noting that the Strive On was easy to jump despite its 25 kilo weight. Squashing jumps was easier on the non-assisted bike thanks to its lighter weight, but the mullet setup on the e-bike meant it was easier to get closer to the back wheel without hitting my bum on the tire. The lighter, non-assisted Strive really came into its own on this trail. It felt energetic, generating speed when pumping and rewarding my sprinting on the flat, much more so than on the e-bike. The Strive didn't feel as stable in turns as the e-bike. This could be because of the extra weight on the frame of the e-bike or its mullet wheel size setup. Despite this, the lighter, non-assisted bike felt much faster to accelerate and easier to maintain speed on the steep jumps and the flattish straights of the Emperor Trail. My average heart rate on the climb on the second test was 165 beats per minute on the Strive and just 145 beats per minute on the Strive On. So fatigue would have been higher on the non-assisted bike despite me dropping down to the lowest gear and taking it as easy as I could on the climb. Interestingly, my max heart rate on the descent was 190 beats per minute on my first run on the e-bike, but 200 beats per minute on both runs on the non-assisted bike and my second run on the e-bike. Climbing time was seven minutes on the non-assisted bike and a blistering two minutes on the Strive On. But what about where it really matters on the descent? Time for more times. Well, despite the additional exertion on the climb, the non-assisted Strive was faster on both runs, with a victory of around 0.8 seconds against the e-bike. It's a small but consistent margin from our small sample size. The lighter weight of the non-assisted bike came into its own on this trail, making it easy to accelerate and pump on the flat sections. So what did we learn? Well, both bikes are extremely capable and I really enjoyed hammering them all day. Climbing with the Strive On is a joy. In our test, the e-bike proved to be faster on the rough stuff, thanks, in my opinion, to its extra sprung weight and on this particular model, the mullet wheel size setup. But the non-assisted Strive is lighter and more nimble on flatter tracks, which means quicker acceleration and more efficiency. Climbing is a no-brainer. It's easy to get four times as many runs in using the e-bike and with noticeably less fatigue to boot. So it's horses for courses as to whether you choose an e-bike or a non-assisted bike. What do you want from your bike? And what type of trails do you typically ride? Let us know in the comments. Thanks to Canyon and Windhill Bike Park for making this video possible. And thanks to you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Bike Radar for more tech videos.